What do you think of his welding job? I think it's excellent. It's very handy to be able to do it yourself. And they don't have to take it to the local garage and have them do stuff for you badly. <laughs> I can do it badly here myself. Exactly. <laughs> This is Torin, and we're turning this lifeboat into a liveaboard. We've talked before about how there isn't a whole lot of outside space on Luya, but in this episode, we're going to do our best to begin to fix that. After considering and quickly discarding the idea of wood, we ended up using this graded fiberglass product. It's often used on docks, and it's a really, really great material. Before we could install it, we had to take off this rubber bumper. And as we did that, we discovered our boat was falling apart. Those bolts that Torin just uncovered are what hold the two halves of our hull together. Unfortunately, when Luya was first built, they just used plain steel. And over the years, those bolts turned into a rusty, mushy mess. In some cases, you could actually see through the boat into the inside in the gap that was created by that. So as you can see, Torin had to grind them all out so we could replace dozens and dozens of bolts with the proper material. What is that and why was it in the fridge? Uh, it's butyl tape and we put it in the fridge so that it uh, isn't so sticky when we're trying to install it. Remember those gaps in the hull I was just talking about? Where they got really bad, we used butyl tape to fill the edges. It squishes in around the bolts and just really helps to fill the gaps. Luckily though, a lot of the places we just needed new bolts and we didn't need to try and squish this stuff in. It's not the easiest to work with, as you can see, it's pretty floppy. I always tease Torin about how much he loves a bolt, and I think this Wing Master car order made him pretty happy. It was totally worth it though in the quest to have a drier boat. So we're bolting back together the bottom and the top of the hull. It was formed in two big pieces and then uh, bolted together and the bolts were pretty rusty when we got Luya so we've... Non-existent. Okay, non-existent. <laughs> so we've taken them all out and we're replacing them with new stainless bolts so that our top doesn't blow off our bottom. And then once we do this, we're gonna attach the second half of the deck. Since you can see through the deck, we decided to paint just this little ledge the same color gray. But as we waited for that paint to dry, it was time to tackle some inside projects. So today we're painting the bilge white, so that's this area here. And yesterday we washed it all out and took the very brown orange to being a little bit more of a true orange. But we're gonna use this for a bilge and also for storage. So the white's really nice because it means that it's a little bit easier to see everything. It'll be easier for us to tell if we're getting any leaks or anything. And in a small space, having white means the light bounces around a little bit. So it's easier to see what we've got stored under there. So I got most of the steering station framework painted. Most of that, we're gonna paint right at the end. 
get this part of the, we're calling it the ditch. And then up here, so under our bed area, brightened it up nicely. This paint is crazy. I also painted myself quite uh, impressively, which is too bad because I'm actually wearing a shirt that I like, which was dumb. But anyway, uh, this is all getting painted even though you won't see any of it, just to protect it. And we're using Interlex Bilge, Pe uh, Bilge Coat, which is extremely sticky stuff. <laughs> so it covered over the orange really well and just needs a couple of coats and it'll be super nice and bright in there. So we are gonna weld on these bolts so that we can take on and off our zinc in the future without so that this and our rudder is protected. How do you know if it's like stuck enough? Doesn't fall off. Okay, so this attaches here. So wait, this holds the rudder on, right? Yeah, so okay. this is attached to the bottom and then this attaches to here and the bottom of the rudder fits in there. And is the rudder the big orange thing? The rudder is the big orange thing. Okay. So. And then we're going to epoxy this? Yes. To protect it. Yeah. So we've got to strip it all and we're going to acid etch it. And then once we're done acid etching it so it's all bright metal again, we will neutralize the acid, wash it off, dry it, and then um, we'll put an epoxy barrier coat on it. And then it'll get um, between three and six coats of epoxy and then we will put uh, bottom paint on it. We're getting ready to start installing part of the deck and now that we've attached this back together but the boat itself is not very flat so the deck is really coming off at quite a jaunty angle and originally what we were going to do was I've got all these little shims along here to kind of pick it up a bit, but what we've decided to try and do is take our strips of deck to the table saw and kind of cut out the back a little bit so that it uh, drops down and this part lifts up and we will bolt it together. So we're going to try it with a five foot piece to start so that we're not risking too much of our deck and we'll see what happens. Before we could start cutting up the big pieces of fiberglass, we needed to template out the material that we were actually going to use. We didn't have a ton of spares, so it was important for us to make sure that things were gonna fit. And of course, as we've said before, nothing is even or square or really straight on Louis. So using this piece of thin wood allowed us to make a good template that we could test out on the hull before we cut into our deck. Once we had the template done for the front, Torin started to cut out the main walkway for the sides. Now, I think we looked completely ridiculous in our living room as we were trying to figure this out, but it was quite the process to decide how wide to make this. We knew we needed enough room for me to walk around as we docked or go through locks, but on the other hand, we can't go too wide or we'll stop fitting in our slip. We ended up at about 9 inches and so far we're really happy with it. Here, Torin's cutting it out pretty roughly. Think about if you draw a complicated shape on a piece of paper and you want to cut it out. First, you'll go around with the scissors pretty wide and then come in to finish the precision cutting. Here, 
Here, Torin's passing the back or boat edge of the material through the table saw. And he's cutting into the material so that, like I said, we'll have a little bit of a thinner piece of material at the back, which will counteract how it's canting forward towards the water. So while I've been editing video in the boat, Torin's been working on all of these, a heroic job. So he cut them on the table saw and then has rounded the edges. And then the next step will be to continue attaching them up there. What's the brown stuff? It's for uh, anti-seize, so that the bolts don't jam together because they're stainless. Small accident with the copper stuff, so we're taking it from where it landed. <laughs> Ten bolts later, almost scraped it off. <laughs> so installing the deck finally. It's the walkway will go down the side of the boat and a little bit along the back. But right now we're doing this side, and then hopefully when we dock we'll be able to step on and off without too much trouble. <laughs> so as you've been watching, the general process was to hold up the deck, pre-drill for it, put in the bolt, and assemble the whole system. We used well over 100 bolts and countless washers to put this all together, but it is so strong and stable and we're really, really happy with it. All right, what are we doing? Measuring the exterior distance around all the way around. And then we're going to measure how many feet we have of the rubber so that we can evenly bring it back. So we know we're not going to have enough because we've extended this out. But we're doing something different in here so we could maybe use some other type of rubber if we can't find more replacement of this stuff. Putting the rubber back on not only protects us from docks and locks, but other boats from us as well. It's a nice bumper to have and it really, really finishes off the look of the deck nicely. However, it is not easy stuff to move or bend and it's surprisingly heavy. So you can see we definitely struggle to get it around the curves especially and this front one took some doing. Yay! That looks weird. <laughs> I think that's just how it's gonna look. <laughs> Sorry, Luya. That's so weird. As we made it around to the straight parts and also got into a bit of a rhythm, things got a lot easier. Of course, what's a project on Luyo without a few more bolts? So you can see there, we went back through the original holes and attached it to the deck. That was the last step of this project, though don't worry, we do come back for that bow in a future episode. Thank you so much for watching us and supporting us through all these videos, this crazy project. Don't forget to subscribe and we will see you at our next episode coming soon. Bye!